Welcome back to the WGL EU Season 1, brackets, Season 6. But we're calling it Season 1 because we are starting afresh here. We're starting at the very top. And of course, I'm joined by my usual band, uh, Ollie next to me, and Melly, of course, down to the far left. And that's just in case you missed the pre show. We have our usual lot back here. And it's always good to have the kind of cast back with us. I've missed this. And now we're into the main show. I think we're all pretty excited here, right? Absolutely. Of course. It's like having a little family back at this desk. It's great. It is a very dysfunctional family, <laughs> but a family nevertheless. And it's obviously not the same without you guys at home. We've missed you. Thanks for coming back and chilling out with us today. We're going to be getting into the action right about now. Starting off with the fact we've got 11 weeks of World of Tanks content coming up for you guys very soon. 12 teams being featured, and it's going to be incredible. We have the returning giants, like some Virtus Pro, GG Well Played under a new name. We've got so many good teams now going head-to-head, -head, and some fresh blood to be thrown into the mix. So who knows what we're going to have coming out this season. But we need to at least have a look at the table, have a look at what we've got coming up, these teams, and just try and make some predictions, because I have no idea who's going to come out just straight out of the gates this season. Yeah, it's uh, it's so unpredictable. I mean, five, six new teams into the league. It's mm -hmm. going to be truly incredible and truly um, unpredictable. Uh, season five, we still had most of the kind of teams from the previous season, but this one's going to be unbelievable. It certainly is. You can see them there. We have the likes of Ding in here, Penta, Synergy making a big return with the new roster, still led by Stalker. Utopia in the mix, Kazna, the fan favorites of ever. GG well played now, known as Team Supreme and Virtus Pro. And mixed in with that, we've got a lot of that fresh blood, as I was talking about. A lot of new teams for you guys to get behind and get involved with. And now, if you were going to predict, let's say, a top three, let's let's make your work right now, because I think it's almost impossible to guess. But try and, if you can, you know, on paper, what would you say the top three would on be? On paper, Team Supreme should win it, okay. full stop. I mean, they are, they've got a dream team. Honestly, the team I would probably make the best European roster out of, almost. Sure. Um, the close second would be Kazan or Virtus Pro. I'm not sure. Um, to be fair, though, I mean, Team Supreme is almost the same as the, the school bus team we mm. saw at the Grand Finals yeah. in uh, uh, 2015. So they didn't do too well there either. I mean, they got into the yeah. second day, but they didn't manage to actually do any kind of like da True. damage. So. I mean, they could get beaten down very, very quickly. They, they just got to get a great start. Well, that's the danger, isn't it? A brand new season, brand new teams. You don't know who's coming into this, who's been doing that hard work. And Melly, what about you? Who's catching your eye so far? I mean, if you look at a past season, it was it was already surprisingly mm. enough that we saw a lot of upsets, that we saw the Giants fall. If we look at the Grand Finals, exactly. a lot of stuff happened, and it was unpredicted. Uh, Predictable, predictable as well. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> hard word for me. And um, with with us knowing all teams from different regions as well, but we now we have six new teams, as Oli already mentioned, and it's kind of impossible. Impossible for me at this point to say, <laughs> but the community knows. We'll ask them later. Exactly. And now let's bring it back on track as well, because Melly's given you a thought. You know, she doesn't want to call it just yet, but let's at least look at today's games, because at least you'll give us a good starting point now as to what we can expect to see. We've still got Virtus Pro in the mix. They're going to be making their debut into a brand new season. Kazna as well. No mercy. A lot of big teams going to be playing today to give you guys an idea of what to expect in the upcoming weeks. Now, that aside, we've already shown you today's games just in the pre-show, so we'll, we'll skip that for now. We don't need to remind you, you guys were here. And if you weren't, well, it's going to be pretty good. We'll catch you up in a bit. Melly, talk us through what you think the people at home are going to be going into here, because it's a new season, they're not sure. How can they get involved? I mean, um, let's go to the team vote first. Uh, our veterans should know the drill for everyone that just tuned in. People, you can vote for your favorite team um, before every matchup and tell us what you think about a matchup itself. Also by tweeting us using the hashtag WGLEU. By doing so, by either voting or and or and tweeting, you can win bonus codes. We'll be giving away three bonus codes for the right predictions on, on the team vote, given away randomly. So not, um, don't don't th please please don't think that you, that if you vote right that you win instantly. It's not like that. It's a little lottery. You have to uh, have at least a little bit of luck mm. to make it like exciting for everyone. <laughs> so um, don't be sad if you don't win. Just try next time, and I bet. Uh, your time will come and you will definitely get one bonus code during the season, I promise you. And also, as said, tweeting us by using the hashtag WGLEU, we will reward five tweets of the day. 
And um, that's pretty much how it works. We're also sure. having another nice feature, the, mm. the live tweet. So if, oh, you yeah. can't, if you can't follow the stream, don't be sad. Follow our Twitter account at WGLEU and we will keep you updated. We will tell you after every round, you know, well, in 140 characters, what happened. And um, yeah, just keep you on track, even if you can't watch the stream whatever circumstances ever. And we already have reactions from the community. Awesome. Yes. Pretty and cool. um, Antonio says, uh, Mines, want to see EU teams approach the map after watching all the other regions? I think that's a question for our dear analysis, Oli. What do we think of Mines? We might, well, we are going to see it today. So what can we think towards this? I've seen it a little bit in the mm. NA. Uh, they, they seem a little bit, you know, he hesitant to try new things. Do you think we're going to see a whole new way of playing it out? Or how do you think it's going to actually go? I don't think it's going to be that dissimilar from random battles. Um, it's going to be about the hill play. I mean, in 742, we saw how the northern team always goes, um, tries to get on the hill first because they get there more quickly and the southern team doesn't. Obviously, you've got the western east side caps as well. That can change things around a little bit. But I, I think it's going to stay quite similar to what we saw in 742, at least what I saw from Asia and, and North America. That kind of gave us a good idea. Also, um, the RU and CIS started this weekend as well, so we saw a couple of games there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a different region, and it just depends on how the teams want to play it. It's a small map. There's only so much you can do. Well, we've discussed the first maps. Let's talk about the first game of the day. We're going to have No Mercy up against Woosa. A very big game for all you fan favorites out there. A little bit of new blood coming in, a little bit of the old returning. What do we think of these two head to head? Um, some old faces in there. Um, I want to talk about No Mercy first because um, they they have, for instance, Matt PL. They have Shock. They have Snip. Um, that is Bishu in that lineup as well. We, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's not. I don't think. Which he uh, He's from. He's in uh, Utopia, I believe. Ah, that's it. Uh, and you know, for the for the, I mean, these are the oh, these are kind of the old Polish guard. Yeah. I mean. Uh, the Polish players kind of go through each other's players a lot. They kind of <laughs> transfer teams a lot. But I think, for instance, Lipinay is a very cool head, and I think he's going to add a lot to the team, obviously, coming from previously Denali Sports. And um, from from the side of Wusa, I mean, they're always a good European team. We can't really ever count them out. They did well in the last season. I think they're just going to get better. I think they're going to get more strong mm. um, into this season. Of course, they got Hallucin Gen from Fair Victus. There's an Ichter and Silmoj, as we mentioned in the pre-show, pre, uh, pre yep. coming from TCM game. Well, I think this one's going to be an absolute cracker to be begin the season with. So, guys, let's get ready. First map coming up, it's going to be Himmelsdorf. It's going to be game time. We are live into the server right now, and I'm so excited to see this one. The first game of a brand new season. No Mercy in the red, starting down towards the southeast. And in the north on defense, it's going to be Wooster trying to lock it down, trying to hold it back. And you mentioned the changes that are going to be coming in towards Himmelsdorf. You can already see that northern flag has moved a little bit, or the cap, should I say. What do you think we're going to see out of this one? Well, I, I had a chance to look in a few training battles um, before the, se the season started, so kindly as the teams let me. Um, and, and, it, and I just have to put it, I mean, full stop, it's really hard to attack. I mean, it, beforehand it was it's super easy to defend and now it's almost the binary opposite. If you're attacking, you have the advantage as long as you get it right. Um, I think the most important thing for the defenders, at least, is just to go aggressive at the beginning. Try and catch the other team out, try and do some early damage just so they can't be so dominant when they go on the attack. And I think you've called it pretty right. The T-37 already heading straight across. Can he probably put itself into a little corner? You can see it's Siege just to keep eyes on. Maybe that eight line, see if anyone pushes up. And he probably will spot out Shock pretty soon. So already finding out the IS-3 has made its way there. But the vast collective of No Mercy is on the eastern side pushing the hill. What do you think so far of Wooster's play here? It looks quite typical to what you expected, actually. Yeah, I think it's it's what we've seen in the, the pre-season, the off-season. And um, I think Wooster's a little bit disappointed they couldn't get the cross on him. We've seen a lot of the teams go up the eight line, push up and towards the northern cap and, you know, just put some pressure on there. But uh, clearly, um, No Mercy aren't going for that. They're just going to be going straight across the hill and down towards the cap. You can see they're not wasting any time getting towards that northern side, and you'll wow. see the pressure being applied immediately. It just depends on how fast Wusa can react to this. 
Yeah, this is definitely a very swift move here. They had a plan in mind, and they're playing exactly towards it. We've got the 5100s now kind of turning their turret, turning their attention back towards the north. And with the cap already started, the IS-3s are placing them. So you've got Lucky Blast and Nevi, I believe his name is. We're going to be learning some new names here, and that's a pretty good start. So already putting the pressure towards Wusa, who seem to be getting themselves back towards the north here. Now, Wusa really have two options. Um, they can either shoot through the window where Matt PL is and, or push around with all tanks there, or or they can push the three or four line or combination of two. It looks like they're going for that second option. They're just waiting for that 5100 to catch up from the south. Yeah, but look at the time. Seven seconds left. They're going to have to make a move. Wusa needs to get back in here. The time is against them. You've got Schwenk and Durs up towards the north. First reset comes in, and already we're seeing the kills coming into place. Sadly for New Mercy, they're getting a little bit both broken and beaten, but they're still holding numbers, and they still have a slight advantage in HP. Yeah, they have a good little advantage now. They can go forwards. Um, you can see uh, No Mercy are just reacting straight away. You'll see this a lot from the teams. Once they can't cap, they'll push out and they just find a weakness in the attackers. And they've gone for the IS-3s. The two IS-3s, Vatilian and Rufi, the two veteran players, now backed up by Durs and Schpoink. They're going to do some damage here, but look at this. No Mercy needs to get the damage done fast. Rufi is already pushing away. Siege takes down Rafiki, and this is looking pretty good so far. Vatilian buying a bit of time, but time is of the essence, and Lucky Blast will take him out of this game. One IS-3 down. It looks like No Mercy have lost a little bit of their consistency, but they're keeping fire Five tanks huddled together trying to find the next target and now they have the shells ready and available to do so but Matt is very low. No mercy have to get themselves out of the middle otherwise they'll just get a lot of crossfire and so then they'll oh. get boxed in and that's going to be very very bad news for them. Jamato's on reload and they are going to be looking for more though. Rufi's just racking up the kills so far. Great work from him but Stefan was holding the back play. He was holding that flank for some time and kind of just keeping no mercy within grip and looking at this we've got Fussy Eater, Nevi and Lucky Blast. Okay for HP but Matt is down to nothing. He's a one shot and Siege will deliver it. And now the remaining three are in trouble. They've got HP, but what can they really do here? And they have to just knuckle down a little bit, try and pop find Siege in that T37. Um, but, you know, does an Ichter in that 5100 will soon just be able to unleash himself and, you know, take down Lucky Blast, for instance. Uh, but four versus three, Woos really have to screw up to not to manage to take this, you can take this match. You can see the HP at the top of your screens there. Um, no mercy, about half that of Woosa. And I think Wusa now does an Ichter's off reload. will just want to push in and finish this one off. And I already like this. They're putting Siege just out of the way. They're going to keep him safe in that T37. Very, very low on HP. But Durs can keep doing the sustained damage. Lucky Blast is going to take himself a little bit too low. Who should have a shell to be made first. And Durs now needs to be careful. No mercy are low. He's done the job he needed to. But... Then, let's bear in mind, Wooster are on the defense. They don't need to make the plays. They're going to keep the pressure on, though. And it's a smart thing to do. And I think these three know that their time's up. I'm kind of surprised that Spoink didn't go on reload. I mean, it was never going to be that No Mercy would push into the middle. So he might as well have just reloaded. He's the only non-one-shot tank on the side of Wooster. Um, and does uh, Inichter now on reload as well. They could have possibly finished off uh, Nevi or Lucky Blast once uh, does did that uh, initial damage. So a bit surprising, but as you said, I think Wusa being on the defense has slowed their, their kind of game down. This is the first match of the first round of the WGLU Season 1 2015. So, I mean... You, you, get really, you can't really blame them that they have decided to be a little more passive and, and you know, just let No Mercy go forwards. They are blocked in and they can't really go anywhere. It's a smart play. You don't want to give them an advantage here. Bear in mind, the attackers have the time against them, of course. Nothing new there, nothing new to you veterans of FPS games. And they'll understand exactly why they're playing this cautiously. See if maybe Wusa do make a mistake. Bear in mind, 2.1k uh, HP left overall isn't a massive amount. They may be able to find something if someone gets caught off. But looking at this, Fussy Eater already being spotted there. Already, Stefan knows what's going on. He's going to adjust himself around the IS-3s. So powerful. And he's in Siege around the back there. Does a little bit and Siege does enough. The T-37 coming up strong, taking down the 5100 and forcing the rest of Wusa now to make their move. Lucky Blast, last man, surely to be standing here. No, Nevi's actually stayed alive just a touch longer, but he's the next on the chopping board. And the, well, Five remaining tanks can take their time. The T-37 from the back, and it's Spoink in the 5100 to close out the game. Wusa picking up round one. A oh, good, uh, good, solid first round from Wusa. I mean, you can see the difference between the two sides. Mm. That was very close, only 1.7k yep. HP on the side of Wusa. That's pretty much just an IS-3, a tier 8 heavy tank. So very close, but um, I think it came down to when 
Um, and no mercy was just a little bit too slow to get out of that cap. Um, they did the right thing. They pushed on to what they saw was a weak point because there's only three tanks from Musa around that corner mm -hmm. and the other two were coming from the three four line. Yeah. But they were too slow and it, let, it had Durs and Ichter there and Spoink, I believe, in the 5100 yeah. doing good damage before they managed to get around that corner. Then they pushed into the middle and they got themselves boxed in and, and put into a little bit of an awkward situation up that eight line. So solid all round play from Musa. No mercy. He's uh, clearly a little bit uh, tentative at this early stage. Well, it's their first game, you know, under quite a big spotlight here. So they look okay. They clearly had a, a plan in mind. It just didn't seem to pay off so well. But do you think they can go for something similar? I don't think they need to change too much just yet. I think they they can go for something similar. I think they just need to shake off those first uh, match nerves and, and just go into this game, uh, this next round with a clear mind. We're always talking about this round by round mentali mentality. Yep. But you usually say that when, for instance, they're down disastrously. It's just the first round. Yep. Himmelstorf has completely changed. Um, I think if I was them, I, I wouldn't go over the hill. I mean, it just it gave Wooster too much time to take mm. those middle areas so they could rotate quickly. Um, Wooster were very, very quick on that. As soon as they didn't see enough tanks in that eight line or that middle area or uh, on the, the, the defensive lines, they just got themselves into a position where they'll be able to deal with that cap. So I think No Mercy should just push up the eight line instead. Yeah, and I actually really like the T37. We didn't really mention too much about the tanks. The team's already right about now, so we can turn our attention into game once that goes live. But what did we make of those tank choices there? A lot of IS-3s, a lot of 5100s, mm. nothing too new. No, we saw the T37 from Wusa and the 12T mm. from um, the side of No Mercy. Now, the 12T for me sounds like No Mercy possibly has a west side cap in mind. I mean, you don't usually use a 12T yep. unless you have um, a west side cap because it can shoot underneath those railroads, oh, well. those rail carts. So um, we'll see if that happens. Um, it also gives them more flexibility. They don't have to go for that northern cap unless they commit all the way off that hill. So I, 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 I don't know. I think they're going to do one or two things. Either go for that west side or go um, towards the eight line. Well, we're going to find out very soon. I do hear uh, the teams are ready, and I'm, I'm very excited for this one. I really want to see what No Mercy can do. They looked competent. They looked well-rounded individually. They seem perfectly fine. The difference of a, you know 1,000 HP in a bit isn't too drastic, but it did always seem that Wusa were in control. Obviously, you guys at home, give us your, your thoughts as ever. Hashtag WGLEU. Melly will tell you in the break as well. Don't you worry. She'll keep you up to date. But we want to hear your thoughts. What do you make of the new teams coming in? Who's your favorite so far? And what do you make of Himmelsdorf as well? Because it looks pretty good. I like the way that you know the northern cap isn't such a solid point. It doesn't seem so un... You know, you can actually manage around it. You can actually work around it. You can retake it as a defender and you can attack it as an attacker. It looks like a very nice balance change there coming into play. So I can't wait to see this one starting up. And uh, hopefully once the teams get themselves sorted, we can jump into game. And well, so far, Wusa picking up the first round. A good way to start off. But we said this is... You'd say this is a defensive side map, right? Mm. Uh, well... Yeah. <laughs> Or has it changed? In, in the trading battles, honestly, it's been an attacking map. I think what we'll see now is a lot more 3-1 scorelines in general. Um, uh, beforehand, it was almost always 2-2 because you win two on the defensive side for both teams and you lose two on the attacking side. I think you'll see a lot more 3-1s towards the attacking side. Um, but, you know, it just depends on the adaptation. We saw Wusa do a, a good amount there because it is pretty obvious that most teams will go for that... Uh, northeast side cap so as long as you have a good counter strategy and you have the timing down to a t you can actually do good work as a defender look at this these two teams are going to be meeting on that eastern side both heading towards the hill only two for the defenders spoink and Durs. seeming like they like to duo up here and siege will probably be the sacrificial lamb and well the mx 12 t the one you mentioned is going to be also on the chopping board but look who's backing it up it's the 5100s it's the is3s siege gets a bit of a face fall he's going to try and back out of there i don't know if he's going to make much of this maybe just going to sacrifice himself for the information but here's the backup spoink and does doing a little bit of damage towards nevi who's leading the way in the is3 lucky blast does take down one of the Wusa members, but these guys seem right on point and they might be able to catch these guys out. Spoink now going to be caught out here. Massive amounts of damage coming in. 700, 900. He's down to a one shot. One more shell will put him down, but he makes it away. Perfectly done. Nevi going to commit for it. Takes a little bit of damage, but now does could be in trouble. Actually, uh, the whole of Wusa is in trouble. Uh, does an exit will almost certainly go down. They're going to cross, maybe even start a cap on, but they got two tier eight tanks as an advantage. I think they might just want to brawl this one out and win it that way. This is perfect so far from No Mercy showing exactly why they're in this league. And now looking at Wusa down to four. Picking up Shock the IS-3 is a great way to start getting back into this, but the cap has started. Already No Mercy have a good foothold here, but things can still go wrong. 
Sure it can. I mean, cap on the way. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Um, now, if if you're Wusa, you've got to find a weak point somewhere. The big problem for them will be, uh, will be Jamato on that right side. Matt PL is kind of the bait since Nevi can get the cross on. And with Jamato coming off reload any second now, Stefan's got to be very careful. But look at the time as well, only 10 seconds. They have to make this quick. Matt PL is right on the front of it. Jamto at least holding down that cross, breaking up Stefan. And now with five seconds remaining, Rufi has to push in here. He has to hit the shot. Two seconds left. I don't know if he's going to do this. No, they're hidden around the corner. Brilliant play from No Mercy, pulling out the big gun straight away. Lucky Blast takes down Nevi, but it doesn't matter. The cap has come through and no mercy doing what was necessary. Wusa just getting a little outdone. Yeah, I mean, th that's the thing. W once you have that position where Wusa was, I mean, th the other team, the, the attacking team can simply just turn the corner and they can be safe mm. from that angle. So you got kind of two caps in one. One where you're just yeah. around the corner uh, next to the houses and then when you turn the corner, you've got a whole new set of angles you need to come from. So if you're coming just that's from one really angle, good. if you're just coming from that one, one angle, it's very, very hard to defend indeed. Um, mm. And uh, yes, okay, New Mercy, they put those IS3s first to kind of just slow Wusa down. Jamata being on reload, the team captain of No Mercy didn't help them at all. But, you know, good play, and they knew that they didn't have to brawl it out. I mean, they could have gone both ways. I think they could have brawl, uh, just won it through the damage, but, yeah. you know, they went for the safe play and they got around on the board. That's fantastic. I love seeing teams like this who I'm not too aware of really showing up and bringing us a brilliant game to start with. You guys at home, you are letting us know your thoughts and hopefully so far your predictions aren't going too far wrong because I guess the easy bet is going with what you know, which would be Wusa. Mm. But already it looks like maybe there's a little bit of fight in these new boys coming into this and I like the way they're playing, I like what they're doing and I can't wait to see more of it. However, they will be switching sides. Mm. So now it's you know a little bit of the other side of the coin. What can we take from Wusa really? Can we see if they're playing well? Is there enough to be read from yet or is it too early? I think it's too early. Um, two rounds on the board on Himmelsdorf. Mm. Um, I think it's good that they got one round on the defending side because as I, as I said oh, again, oh, it's oh. very, very hard to win uh, as an attacker these days. Just super, super hard. Uh, you need to get also, uh, as a defender, it's super, super hard. I mean, you need to get eyes on the eight line, you need to get vision there. You, you're always conscious that the other team has the hill so it can shoot down from yep. the hill onto the top of your tank. So you've got all these kind of factors to keep in mind and that's always going to cause problems for you if you're not paying attention, you don't get your timing right. But I think that's a, a decent start for both teams. Um, uh, one all and this side swap will, will show us what kind of flavor these guys are going for? We haven't seen No Mercy. They're new to League. Are they an attacking team? Are they a defending team? What's their what's their choice of style? And I think that's going to be massive. I'm really excited to find out really what they can bring as a collective because I think on their attack they looked very competent. You know, first round they looked a little jittery, a little nervous. But round two, they really started to just kind of smooth things out. You guys at home are having no faith. Only around 30% of you. Come on, guys. Whereas, you know, the, the support of the new teams, I guess when, you know, points and codes are on you know, the line. People want to get those votes right. So, all right, I, I get it, I get it. But predictions and thoughts, and any questions, of course, as well, head over to uh, Twitter and use that hashtag, WGLEU. We love hearing from you. And any questions, whether it be about Mines or Himmelsdorf, all the new teams will all be put to Ollie. And if he gets it wrong, you can lynch him at the end of the season. We promise Thanks. you. Thanks. It's all right. I like just throw you under the bus. Yeah, nice. Literally a bus. A knife a bus, bus, but still a knife. <laughs> Don't remind me about school bus. It's already making me so upset that they I know, I'm a little gone. heart broke. But I'm, I'm glad Applewell's not, you know, yeah. migrated yet towards NA. But let's turn our attention back to this game because the team's already no messing around this season. I like this already. And they are straight into the game. So we will be seeing no mercy on that defense now. They're going to lock this one down. It's their turn to show us what they've got. And on the other hand, Wusa has to bring that attacking prowess that they've shown before. And what do we see so far? Well, the FE304 is, is pretty interesting <laughs> as a defender. I mean, clearly you can get some good shots on and you can defend your base with it, but still it's just a, an odd choice altogether. Um, from that team and if he can actually hit the shells, which is not that hard in that British uh, uh, SBG, then it'll be fair enough, but let's see if that one actually works out for them. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a factor into this. I'm trying to think of who played this before, I can't remember. Um, it was certainly a feature last time around. Yeah, we saw it from... Um, was it we saw, yeah, no. we saw it from uh, a school bus. We've seen it from a, a few teams before, um, especially in the Season 5 Finals. And it, and it did work, but the thing is, I mean, we saw some teams copycat it and it didn't work. So it really does depend on if you have the prowess with that tactic to see if you can use it or not. It's a big thing here. I think this is going to be a good telling point for No Mercy. Have they seen a tactic and thought maybe we could make it count? Or have they actually worked on this? And Matt PL already is in a little bit of trouble. He's cornered in here, but he's keeping good eyes on. 
And bearing in mind, they are on defense. They don't need to worry too much about this just yet. Oof. That was close. Yeah, it was. I think uh, maybe you can see a little bit of the idea of what they've got with that FV there. Just to try and maybe use Matt to keep eyes on these guys. And Rafik maybe making these shells. Another one's going to be coming in. Sadly, again, not quite making it past the terrain. The broken buildings pretty much saving Vatili and Rufi from getting a little bit of damage. But looking at Wusa, what's their initial focus? I assume it's Matt. Very interesting, actually, start from Wusa. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but they're, they're doing it pretty well. I mean, Matt Peel did not expect to be... HE down with that line in that IS3, but he is. I mean, so much damage coming out from 150, 250 damage with HE shells coming onto the top of that turret. Of course, you know, with the changes to the IS3, it makes it even harder to kill them before, especially with the top of that turret being, that the weak spot on its top of its turret being uh, made smaller. And of course, the frontal plate now uh, is a little bit harder to penetrate with those two tracks adding a little bit of armor. But Wusa staying in the middle and not going for that northern cap is, is very unusual and it seems to have caught no mercy by surprise. And uh, not enough damage to really give them a huge advantage right now. And no mercy clearly don't want to, you know, let Wusa have any slack and they want to be pushing forward, keeping pressure on them oh, a little bit. This is quite interesting though already. We're starting to see that T37 and I believe an AMX 5100 on the hill starting to move towards the north and the rest of Wusa also ro rotating around that central point. So they're heading up the eight line. They pulled no mercy towards the south and now they're going to start their play towards the north. This is quite interesting, but it's going to leave the clock a little against them here, surely. Yeah, I mean, three minutes and 50 four seconds to get that cap down but they kind of thought okay so you know we, we've seen that no mercy have gone down the two three line and we'll just take advantage of that by pushing on the opposite side and getting towards the cap as quickly as possible you can see no mercy have have caught on to that fact and i will highlight again it's a big problem spotting that eight line from the two three line you need to get tanks in very specific positions to get it and Siege has taken full advantage at Nevi in the T-32, of course, the hull down American tank will be kind of keeping that one safe, but it, it's just impossible to defend from the 4-line now. This is going to be very difficult. Let's see if no Nomosi can retake this northern cap. Siege is going to be the one in the cap so far. He's going to be just placing himself there in the T-37, so he can't really withstand a great deal. But Nevi not going to hit the first shot towards him either, so... I don't think you can even really hit much of an angle down there unless they commit towards this. And no mercy, playing it quite calm. Now that's a great bit of usage there. That's a good kind of, not necessarily a counter, but it's a good way to keep that tank in check, the T-37. It was actually a blind shot as well. Um, I mean, it's a pretty obvious blind shot where Siege would be. You can see uh, you know, Rafik carries on trying to get the damage. Now, it's not going to be enough. I mean, Carvey is still capping and he's still safe. So regardless, no mercy needs to go forwards and try and do something. Oh. But a beautiful penetrating shell with that uh, FV304 comes out onto Siege. He's got to try and scamp out of there. But still, the pressure is on no mercy and, and the favor is in, in, in towards Wusa. Uh, I think you'd see these five tanks just pushing straight forwards with Matt PL in the background potentially taking Nevi's position. But look at Rufi and Stefan. They've kind of mobilized themselves slightly further south. See if they can fold in towards this and do a bit of a split play. So we've got the 5100s coupled with that IS-3 towards the cap itself. And now Rufi and Stefan starting to support their way down that more central five line and also holding the flank itself. And now time will be of the essence. Soon enough, No Mercy will have to commit to this. And not only will they have to take down Durs and Carvey, they'll have to get past Rufi. They're going to have to get past the IS-3s and they're going to have to do it soon. Already Rafik is looking for an angle, but here comes the counterplay, and they're going to have to make it count. Nevi gets caught in the cross. He gets tracked for a second, back up and running. But now six seconds left. They need to hit these shots, and they're not. Four seconds remain. This is going to come down to the wire. Two seconds. They start it. The shot finally comes into play for No Mercy. But that took far too long. Now Carvey is on that carving board. He's going to back up. Lucky Blast really committing here. Maybe a little too much, though. So. Down to a one shot. Durr's not going to hit it. Now he does. Takes down Lucky Blast blast and look at this play round the back we see the rest of Wusa starting to get into the action and where are these two left at I don't know I think a uh, great position now for no mercy they got more hit points they got more tanks alive oh, as well and they got better go. position but Wusa going in again Rufi gets a little caught then as he peeks out but Tillian and Stefan do come in though saving his teammate there Nevi going down shock still in this just taking shell after shell and where's the rest of no mercy shocks just being left to the wolves at the moment being picked to pieces but if he can buy time, if he can slow him down, this is going to be a very close game. Bearing in mind, the cap is still starting, it's still going here. 48 seconds overall, what's your best option if you're no mercy? Well, uh, they haven't got very much time to actually take down um, 
uh, this, any of these tanks. So I don't know if you're no mercy, you just have to carry on pushing, keep on getting the pressure on, and don't let Wusa, you know, grind you down as they are now. Well, here we go. This is where it comes down to fire from all fronts. Wusa trying to hold on here, and they can't let this one slip. There's not much time left on that board. The best they can hope for is a full cap. Maybe going to try and push out here. Stefan will find Yamto, but is there any more to be found? The time is run out. I don't think they have enough time for this. They're going to have to go for the kills, but that FE is already up and running, getting the hell out of dodge. And I think No Mercy with just this much HP, under 1,000 HP, might be able to do this one. Great play coming in. Fussy Eater just needs to keep him busy as already Rafiq makes the run for it and it will be no mercy to pick up round three. Nicely done then. It's always the FE3 or 4 that, that saves the day. Because, I mean, that tank is so fast. It, it's basically a tier 6 light tank. It can you know, get from A to B so quickly and no mercy knew that they could keep it safe and out of the equation and that really Roos had no chance of catching up. I loved seeing that play and it did come down to quite a close game though because that cap was down to, what, two seconds at one point? One then, second, yeah. It might have been. And then the brawl kind of almost went into uh, Wooster's favor, but then mm. it just seemed that No Mercy had a, a plan in mind from the very offset that if this happens, we're going to put that FE as far away as pro possible, keep him close enough, he might be able to reset it. And it just worked out. That was very school bus-esque almost. As soon as I see that tank, I can't help but think of Arklet when he saves the day like that. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the biggest surprise was that... Um, you know, Woosa had those two tanks down um, towards the, the middle area. I guess mm. they were expecting No Mercy to uh, split push, you know, have some go up the 3-4 line and have some go through the middle. And um, that didn't happen, so that meant those two tanks were out of positions. They were aiming right. towards where, I believe, was it Rufi was aiming in the middle, um, yep. in the IS-3. Uh, but the thing is, they were at long range. If they had them next to the capping tanks where Durs was, it would have been a different story. Also, Siege getting caught out on the cross in that uh, T-37 mm. wasn't too great either. He would have helped a little bit. But, you know, No Mercy gamble with that full-on push around the corner, that all-in strategy. But it worked out well. And um, with that FE as well being so quick, it was a good it was a good all-round strategy. And they seem to be a pretty collected team. I, I'm a little surprised. You guys out there, I'm sure the votes are starting to swing a little bit. If you hadn't voted already, obviously you get your chance to do that at the start of games. But I don't know. I'm a little impressed so far. I want to see this final round. If it's a 3-1 score, though, on the first map, that's a pretty damn good showing. That's a great uh, showing, but I don't know. I think I think Roos's experience is going to come in, into its own. Yeah. I think they're going to do well on the sec second attacking round. The, the mistakes were obvious, um, and they're seeing that as all of these kind of Polish teams, they always go in with all their tanks. It's very classic strategy, mm. pushing in with all your tanks, not split, uh, split push, pushing so much. And I think Russo has learned that lesson the hard way so far. I mean, they just need to kind of fix that mistake and I think they're going to do well here. Yeah, the vote's still not in No Mercy's favor. You guys at home are a cold, harsh mistress to these boys, but we will wait and see what they can bring for their second go on the defending side. As you said, quite difficult. We've already seen a lot of caps, a lot of pressure towards the north. I actually quite like this addition. It means that Himmelsdorf isn't so static anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to you know, speed up the pace a little bit. They have to respond very quickly on the defending side. And while the attack is certainly having a tough time of it as well, you guys at home, hashtag WGLEU. Let us know, what do you make of the new Himmelsdorf? Those small changes are already looking pretty damn cool. And Melly, have we heard much at all just far, you know, just yet? How's Twitch chat responding to this as a many a capper out there? Uh, no, they're pretty quiet, actually, because there's so much action going on in this game. True, very so, true. Well, um, they're happy about the change of pace in this game, to be honest. Mm. They like to see Fresh Blood doing well, and mm -hmm. No Mercy is showing off good good rounds so far with yep. the with the awesome reset of the cap in the very last second that, that even amazed good. me. And um, people, as Lauren already mentioned, we want to hear, hear from you. Tweet us by using the hashtag WGLEU. And by doing so, not only I get to read all your awesome tweets, you also maybe win one, one bonus code. Well, there you go. You've got your incentive now. You've got to get doing it because we're almost ready for the final round on Himmelsdorf. At least in this one, the overtime map, if we need it, or the additional map, the tiebreaker, will be Himmelsdorf again. So if you liked it already, you're going to get it twice if it goes to it. But if no mercy pick up this round, it might be a little bit too much for Wusa. But let's find out if that veteran side of Wusa can lock down the new boys, the new blood, the fresh guys to the scene, no mercy, who will be once again in the north on the defending side and Wooster in the south on the attack. Yeah, the obviously game mode says two times on one side, two times on the other side. The old switcheroo comes in between those two rounds. So uh, obviously, um, you know, Wooster are looking to pick up an attacking round. I'd be very surprised if they don't, as we've been talking about the change to this map 
does allow the attackers to go forward and win a lot more easily than it did in a season five of the Wargaming League Europe. So we can see the initial play, uh, the T37 on the hill from Seash. I prefer the T37 than the MX-12T just because you seem to need a little bit more damage on the attack. Um, again, Wooster not going for any of these eight-line pushes. Strange. And I think it would have done well because you can see the split from No Mercy is, is pretty interesting. They got one IS-3 there and then got uh, a 5100 on the cross and an IS-3 and a T32 to kind of protect that 5100. But I think overall, Wooster is going to be looking towards to go to, towards the left side. Otherwise, they would have gone, gone for that hill straight away. The 5100 on the hill as well does suggest to me that they won that overall kind of map control at the beginning before going in. And are we seeing a new tactic from No Mercy? Because we've got a couple of Tigers out there as well, Yamto and Rafik both picking those up. What, what's their usage here? What is their reasoning behind this? Well, the Tiger has one and a half thousand hit points. It's a lot. It's the same as the Tier 8 Heavy Tank, the IS-3. The gun's also insane. The DPM is really good, even though it's only 240 average damage. But it, it just pumps out a lot of damage very accurately, very deadly. Um, I'm kind of surprised we didn't see it more in Season 5, um, just the light tanks blew us all away in that season um, but I don't know in my opinion the Tiger it gets burned down too easy it's a little too vulnerable and, and you find it kind of that 240 damage bouncing and, and, and not being particularly effective against the brute that is the IS-3 now you can see all the tanks from Musa heading towards the left side no mercy haven't changed at all now I always say that the less time, the, the more time the defending side stays in one position the worse it is for them in general with this uh, with these changes and as you can see on the maxi map, a little bit of a linchpin of Rufi, Carvey and Stefan going to move up towards the west side cap here. Carvey and Stefan kind of set themselves up in a nice covering position, just holding that three line. Rufi and Vitalian now joining them. And what do we make of this? Do we like this play? Because already these guys look kind of ready for this, though. Yeah, they seem to have a good tactic. Um, I'll have to see how it works out. Uh, let's see how, let's how, see how quickly No Mercy goes. So the Siege is going to sit himself behind the little house there. That was a change we saw in 9.6 um, on Himmelsdorf. Uh, Stefan Rufi provides some good cover foul, and, and it's going to be out without Rafik and Jamato. Uh, the 5100 in Hills also, it depends how quickly that's going to come off. Um, and T32 of Nevi, he's actually going to get away with this one quite easily because he can just head straight over and go hull down in that window before he even, well, he receives one shell from Stefan. Um, but if Carvey had been there, it would be a lot worse off for him. But again, I think it's, it's, it's going to be pretty hard for um, No Mercy to get back in time. Yeah, they're going to need to as well because only 10 seconds on this cap. Wusa taking the bull by the horns and going to be trying to bring this one to a win. And I don't see them getting a shot back. Shock and Lucky Blast are too far away. This has been a great idea. Vatillion and Rufi are going to really speed that up. And we will see a very clean victory from Wusa. That was just ingenious play. And No Mercy just did not seem prepared. They looked so out of sorts in that game. They clearly had a plan mm. they wanted, but when you're on the defense, you don't get to dictate that pace. Exactly. On the attacking side, it's all about dictating pace. Um, I think those double Tigers probably mm. lost, it, lost it for them because, you know, with that classic West Side um, push into the cap, we usually see the T37 either coming from a hill or, or along the eight line, and it comes up from behind so we can mm. get the shot and kind of diagonally across into the back of the capping tank. Um, but they didn't manage to do that. They didn't even get close to resetting. They need no. another 15, 10, 15 seconds to get that reset in. So again, you saw lots of tanks from No Mercy up north being very defensive towards that northern cap, which is fair enough, but they just don't have enough time to get that, get to that western side. And they stayed in one position too long and they gave Wusa that map control. But it was just really nice execution from Wusa. No, uh, no problems at all. No, and I think a nice 2-2 scoreline so far is pretty good way to start this season and obviously it's not about just our thoughts it's about your thoughts at home Melly. how are the people kind of finding this game because it's been pretty damn exciting so far absolutely and um we didn't really saw a tilt in in the mm. in the voting results to be honest no. i expected different but it's still 63 percent for vuza people you still have a little time to head over to to our facebook page slash wgleu to vote for your favorite team the team vote will close as soon as we had into the second map, which is Mines. Mm -hmm. And um, the community already predicts that this will be the map that we're going to see most throughout the season. Okay, so people, you know, backing Mines here. I'm not too surprised. It's, it's a classic map, isn't it? You know, it's I, for me, I, I put it up there with the likes of Himmelsdorf sometimes with mm -hmm. how much it got played when it was in regular season. We saw so many teams bring out slightly different tactics, so much variation. I loved it in the previous seasons, and I can't wait to see it even faster paced now. Yeah, but Gorky is a great map. 
plus one if you uh, get the reference. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, it, it's been fantastic. I mean, Hills is even a good map as well, yeah. but um, Mines especially is my is my favorite name for it. But um, yeah, uh, in random battles, it's, it's probably my second favorite maybe after Ensk. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, mm. I love that kind of whole hill, you know, king of the castle kind of uh, mentality. It doesn't How take... How you not say king of the hill then? God, okay. King of the hill as well. Come on. That's, that's too much of a game mode though, but, <laughs> uh, but you know, you, you've got to get up there and it doesn't yeah. take too long. You've got the whole kind of thing of you have more cover in the in the south and, and a little bit faster towards the hill in the mm. north. Um, I'm sure everyone's been playing Domination a lot. Uh, that's features on that one. It's It's a small, great map. Um, we'll see pushes along the 1-2 line as well. Um, a lot of fast light tanks. Yep. And we might even see, you know, for instance, Lemming Train tactic where they used to take IS-3s on this map. Yeah, speaking of Lemming Train, obviously, if you guys are out there and you're part of this community, you may remember the one-man Carmen who's done some really cool, like, pre-season work. Check out his Facebook there because I've got to give him a shout-out because it was a really nice rundown. He gave his predictions. And obviously, you guys at home can do the same. And there's easy paths, isn't there, Melly? If they want to give you, you know, their thoughts on the overall season so far. Uh, absolutely. I mean, tweeting us is always welcome. Whatever is on your mind, tweet us by simply using the sad hashtag, hashtag WGL. You should see it there as well. And um, people, we love reading from you. And that's true. Carmen did a really cool uh, pre pre-season mm. posting. Let's call it that way. I just retweeted it with, it with at WGLEU. So if you want to read it, head over to our Twitter account and read it. And um, I was actually going to uh, check how he predicted the team vote for this match. And he was going with 55% for Vuza and No Mercy with 45%. Mm. And let me quickly check, since we're almost about to head into the second map the vote is about to close and uh 64 percent and i'm just hearing that you still have a little uh, time left to vote mm. head over to facebook.com slash wglu <laughs> to say it again i love saying it and participate in that team vote by participating you get the chance of winning a bonus code which contains 500 gold and eight days of premium so if that's not worth participating in that vote then people I don't know what to tell you. Um, tell you. So a little break, so you have enough time to do what I just said. And when you're doing what I just said, tweet us. Just tweet us. <laughs> See you later.
So welcome back to the WGL EU Season 1. Very first match day here, of course. And we are already into Game 1, so I don't need to give you the big spiel. We are here with No Mercy up against Vusa. And already it's a pretty close game. Tied at 2-2. Two to two. Pretty damn good, I think we can all say, across the board. How are your feelings on this one so far, Oli? It's been good. Um, really exciting. Um, I, I kind of think that that game could have gone both ways in a lot of respects. Mm -hmm. I think some some pretty big mistakes, some timing, timing mistakes, and perhaps sure. a little bit of nerves coming into the equation as well. But a good start for both teams, I think. They can be pretty happy. Yeah, Melly, the community seems to be responding pretty well to this. They're enjoying the new season. Absolutely. How are they uh, getting on with it? They love the new Himmelsdorf. It's fast and nice and um, being played out very quick. People at home love the new fast setup of the games. Mm -hmm. And also, I just saw a nice tweet from No Mercy's, uh, no Mercy's uh, well, pers uh, well, personal from the account, person, I guess, yeah from the person that is kind of responsible for their mm -hmm. social media activities. So um, he's he's uh, really pushing pushing his guys and he's trying to find uh, kind of excuses. Well, excuse might be the wrong mm. word because <laughs> I guess being reasons, in the highest almost, ranks right? yeah. of uh, exactly reasons is, mm. is more fitting. Uh, being in the highest ranks of this of this game is not easy even for new teams. Hey, when you're competing at the very top 1%, it's never going to be easy. These guys need to turn up, and they're showing some real potential. I think we can all agree here, but we now need to turn our attention towards Mines. This is going to be incredible. Are you excited? Because I know I am. Absolutely. All right, guys, let's start talking about Mines, because it's coming up next. Your predictions on this one. Who do you think's got this? I, I, they've both they've both been good. I, I think Woos has, of course, got the edge because they're... Uh, you know, a seasoned veteran, They're a veteran team. team They're right? exactly a veteran team. Um, they got a top five uh, finish in the last season. So I, I think you have to give the first game to Wusa full stop because they've we kind of seen what they can achieve on paper. Whereas No Mercy, yeah, we, we saw them in a relegation match, but we didn't see much else since then. Uh, but, you know, they have been around the scene a little bit. So mm -hmm. they could also, um, you know, provide some pr surprises. All righty, guys, enough of us. Let's turn our attention to map number two. It's going to be Mines. And boy, am I glad to see this one again. I can't wait for this to be started. But in the south, in red, it's going to be no mercy. And this is two very different lineups here. IS-3s, T-54 lightweight, and a 1390, it looks like. And on the other side, it's a lot more one-sided of tanks. T-54s almost throughout the board there. Yeah, we so clearly... Um, <laughs> They've got a plan. They saw it in season five. They saw it at the grand finals. And uh, the T-54 is always a safe bet. It hasn't changed since uh, the last patch. So it, it's going to be a beast of this season as well. And, you know, with the T-54s, they're so fast, you guarantee to get yourself that hill. And I think No Mercy has done it right, though. They know that Woot is going to get the hill. So they might as well just try and overmatch some hit points and, and a bit of armor as well with those IS-3. So huh. I think they're pretty well as well. Very aggressive around the north. For sure. Bearing in mind No Mercy's on the defense, they're taking themselves on the attack. Going to try and pincer in those T-54s. And here they go. Shock and Nevi going to be heading around the corner. Vatilian already in trouble down a lot of HP. He is being focused down and he is removed. Yamto coming up big in the first opening kill. Shock overextending, trying to catch out Stefan here and he might just do it, but Carvey's coming in with a backup. Rufi trying to make his way across, but no, Lucky Blast in the i3, creating the crossfire and No Mercy are holding this game in their hands. They've got 6k HP to still go through. Stefan's made a run for it, but this looks like No Mercy knew what they wanted from the very start and now Durs is in trouble. Fussy Eater's now surrounded, but he's got Nevi, he's got Yamto so he's got Lucky Blast to back him up. And this game is looking so good for No Mercy. Yeah, great, great pincer movement there. And uh, Stefan bouncing didn't help at all in that T54 lightweight. But that's just such an awkward position for him to be in. Now, let's see if Woos can actually claw anything back yet. I mean, they've got such a little amount of hit points. And uh, No Mercy don't look like they want to slow down. No, they have a goal in mind. They saw that tweet. They want to just step the hell up. And they are. And now, Stefan, Carvey, Siege, the last three standing and are just huddle themselves in a corner here and look at this no mercy just waiting Rafik in that amx 12t oh lovely shot from matt then just coming through see she's gonna fall it's all on carvey and carvey cannot do much here. he knows it he's down he's out the turrets are turned and it's no mercy picking up a massive star here on the defending side taking the aggressive stance and bringing the game to wusa that was brilliant stuff 
Yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed that they actually had the balls to go around Oof. from the north. That was uh, extremely, extremely quick and very dangerous as well. Insane play. Uh, but they knew that they, they knew what Wusu were going to do with those T-54s, maybe even before the T-54s came out. Um, they saw the lineups and, and they just wanted to be aggressive, um, mm. very quick around the side. I mean, it's not that dissimilar from the kind of tactics we saw in 742 on Mines, where we saw a lot of those quick movements around. And and once they took take, took down one of those tier 8 tanks, it, you know, it was... It very hard for Wuxia to bounce back from that. And just look at this. By this point, the IS-3s were there. You still have that 12T in the background, just keeping eyes on. But the fold from these guys was so well-timed, so well-played out. Yamto just came in in the end. Carvey and Stefan made it away, but by this point, there was so much an advantage towards No Mercy. It was almost irrevocable. It was just unbelievable to watch. No Mercy showing they do have some potential, some fight. But it looks like No Mercy have their plans in mind, and it does respond well towards what the opposition are picking. But then I want to see now, what does Wusa now bring to the plate? They mm. made a very... I'd say obvious tactic out of that. There was nothing too surprising. Mm -hmm. You were saying, well, that's where they're going to go. It has its benefits. But clearly, No Mercy knew what they wanted against that. Now, if you're in Wooster's shoes, you're going to play the same side again. How would you go into this? A little more hesitant? I think if you're... You, you, if you're kind of guaranteeing yourself the hill, then mm. you maybe not have all of the T-54s go up there. Maybe have just three of uh, like three of them, and then have the rest sitting down, the other three sitting down somewhere. Because you know, if if you see the team has so many Amix 5100s and IS3s, uh, 50, uh, uh, Amix uh, uh, IS3s, then it's going to be very very good for them. So I honestly think. You know, that was a kind of all-in strategy for No Mercy, but I think Wooster just needs to chill out. And if they do see that ag aggressive beginning, then just push everyone onto, onto the hill straight away or just get that hill straight mm. away. Because, you know, once you lose that that one tier eight, it's it's almost game over in a lot of respects. It certainly is. And we saw them being pushed to their absolute limits. And I'm waiting to see now how Wooster respond. They're meant to be the veterans here. They're meant to be the cool, calm, collected guys who should be able to deal with these situations, especially when they're that fast paced. You've got to respond very quickly. It's probably one of the benefits to being one of the better teams, you know, the likes of Virtus Pro or School Bus back in the day, always able to adapt instantly on the fly. And Kaznar, I guess, you have to put into that group as well. But let's see if Wusu can do it. They're now in that position. They have to show they are the dominant side. They are the favorites here. And still, by quite some margin, you guys at home are backing them. So let's hope they don't let you guys down. Obviously, hashtag WGLEU with any further thoughts or comments on the matter. What did you make of that strategy? Was it a little bit bold coming out from No Mercy, using that underdog benefit, saying, hey, We've got nothing to lose. We're coming to this. You know, we're, you know, we're the new kids on the block. Let's try and make a bit of an impression. They certainly have already. And what do we think now of the tank lineups we're seeing? Do you think we'll see the same thing coming here? Um, yeah, I mean, I think from the south, you'll always see something heavier than something from the north. Mm. You'll see a little bit li uh, lighter tank lineups. Yep. I mean, for me, the mind has kind of come the new cliff. I mean, I'm super disappointed that cliff was is, is gone in the first place. But I think we have a, a pretty decent substitute. Um, in in the forms of course uh, mine so a, a different lineup completely from them I mean well not completely we, st we got well, you still got some uh, heavy tanks in the form of the two is threes but we see this the kind of second Ooh, most different. common tactic yeah. from uh, Wusa which is the one two line push with all those t54s but they're all spot well, a good majority are spotted already and I want to see if no mercy are prepared for this they look a little bit caught out by some of Wusa's plays before but now Woos is going to have to just try and play out their game plan. Look at the HP pool, it's pretty even. Fairly similar across the board. Rafik just going to be locking himself in here, keeping good eyes on and keeping those spots coming. And now Fussy Eater and Nevi can get a couple of shots in towards Rufi. But this is far more stereotypical of what we kind of saw in the previous season almost. Yeah, it's um, a, a lot more normal than we, what we saw yeah. in season four, I guess it was. Um, but uh, usually we saw a kind of... Uh, light tank normally in H2 area, H1 area, um, but there's nothing there from Wusa. Instead, we have Fussy Eater um, up in towards that right side, and he's been backed up by Nevi. So, you know, I, I think for for Wusa, they've still got quite a few options. They, they might want to slow it down a little bit, but they are on the attack, so they do have to go for it eventually. Um, does Zernichter, we saw this on the NA side when I was watching the NA stream, mm. um, a pretty common tactic. You put a tank there, and if you keep the pressure on, it's going to be very hard for any kind of uh, uh, player to decap it. So I think a good a good strategy from Musa. Yeah, showing they've clearly got ulterior plans to this. is not just one. Rafik's in a good spot, but he'll reveal his position if he does try and take these shells. Nevi and Fasita have to be careful of Stefan and Carvi, so they can't really give away too much.
unless, of course, they crest the hill. We're seeing the 1390 and the T-54 lightweight starting to head up north for the No Mercy side. This is a long cap. No one can really join Durs for a little while unless they want to kind of move out into the open roof. He may be going for it. I'm not sure if he'll uh, commit towards that. But this is a long time waiting here. We're going to see about 65 seconds still on the cap. So it's not a fast one, but it's all about the response across the board. And that's a great way of doing things. Yamto picking up Siege there. And now they'll gain some sort of presence in the north. Vatilian is up and now looking to do some damage. Yamto will be called out, not yet having a shell available. Now he does, but I don't think he's the one who wants to make this. Although they're going to have to start keeping in mind plans here because that cap's going to start building up. I think Vatilian's really a big thorn in the side of uh, No Mercy. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do to try and deal with him. They are just going to go uh, and try and take him down. But even if they do, he's bought them a lot of time. Oh, but they've moved in towards the cap as well. The IS-3's turned his attention. They did a bit of a split move. And now you see the counterplay from Wusa. They're going to try and mobilize their forces towards the southern side and go for the overmatches. And so far, it's kind of working. Roost is pretty even on HP, but they're going to gain the advantage soon enough. Let's see how these skirmishes unfold. Nevi's now outnumbered 3v1, but in the north, it's no mercy coming out on top. But Nevi making it count when it matters, doing a little bit of damage on the way out. Surely, Carvi and Stefan will land these shots as they do. But it's down to a 3v1. Well, it's a 3v5, but the HP isn't too drastically against no mercy until that moment. Now, just Shock and Yamto left alive. It's not the cap we so want, it's blood here, and they've got the tanks to do the damage. Uh, only uh, the IS-3 really remaining for um, uh, No Mercy, of course, the T-54 just about getting into position finally. But I think it's just a little bit too little too late. Yes, okay, No Mercy have the higher ground, but uh, could work for Nyamto who has to try and back Shock. off. And now that's a problem to actually, survive. Shock's taken he's got to back off. Shock could land this Shell, he's gonna actually does is gonna back up it because he knows he's in a little bit of trouble. But Shock now is outnumbered. He's gonna have the two v one against him. Yamto can't really support, but actually Yamto's heading down to the south. He could possibly hit a shell if Shock stays alive long enough. There could be help here. Shock goes in for the ram. He goes down. Does is the target they wanted, but Yamto a little too slow, a little too late in the IS three. Down to only what 70 HP. You can see those turrets already eyeing them up. Yamto tries to do a little bit of a last stand, but one shell will be delivered from Stefan and Wusa back in the game. They're not letting this one slip just yet. No mercy and not having an easy time here. And just kind of break down what happened then. So there were so many small battles going on at the same time. There's one up in the north, one in the south. Was it just, you know, smart play from Wusa, you know, the well-rounded playing, picking the overmatches that got in that? I think it was the, the play in the north that Maui have lost it for No Mercy. Yeah, we okay. got the Chief T4 and the, um, the MX-1390 against the line there. Mm. So that was a two versus one. And then, you know, Shock engaged, but then he disengaged. So it bought his team a lot of, uh, bought Wooster a lot of time, and they had enough time to take down Nevi, for instance, in the, in the top right. So I think they managed to get the two versus one, buy some time for their team. Also, does the Nicta in that cap kept the cross on? And I think, you know, just a lot of pressure from Wooster um, up in the north, uh, down in the south. They just kind of split, um, they kind of split them up very well. They split No Mercy up very well. And uh, they just got the damage down at the end of the day. And just a little bit late from No, no Mercy. I think that <laughs> they didn't expect Vitline to be there, which yeah. is, by the way, a great position on this map regardless. Um, so solid play all around. Yeah, we'll have to see if that comes into practice a little more in the couple of games coming up. There's a good few more rounds. It's still toe-to-toe. -to -toe. These teams are still so even. I don't see who's breaking out here. I guess No Mercy are the ones slightly trailing. They're, you know, they're not seeming to lead the pace when it needs that extra layer. When their initial move doesn't work out, they don't seem to have that extra layer that maybe we're seeing Wusa show in that game especially. Um, but I don't know all in all. If you were going to put this way, you said Wusa before. Are you starting to see hints of why Wusa are the more veteran side here? I think we are. Um, I think that play from Vitline, I don't think very many teams would have yeah. really you know, had the courage to put one tank there um, because... You know, what happens if that uh, AMX-1390 and, and T-54 didn't take yeah. the bait? Uh, you know, you would have had one tank on the other side of the map completely out of the game, and one gun in the game is, is really the only thing that counts at the moment. So I think uh, I think Wusa has um, better just all-round play, but I think No Mercy's got better tactics so far. Um, they've shown quite a lot of depth to their game for such a new team. They, they, I, can, okay. Let's let's throw it back to last season when the newer teams came in. You saw such a difference between experienced teams mm. and the newer additions. There was massive disparity there. But it does seem as though we're really seeing a lot closer skill, a lot more teams coming in. And of course, a new game mode will always help that. I, I say new game mode. We've had it for a little while now. But newer teams have that time to kind of catch up with the big guys who are learning it as well. And it's always good to see that you know newer teams like No Mercy, who have some veteran players in there 
can really compete. I don't think it's going to be a great season if it keeps up like mm. this. But has, you know, if, if I was going to push you for a scoreline, what do you think you'd guess at so far? Because we're still tied all even at 3-3. Three three. Oh, well, um, mine seems to be pretty balanced um, mm -hmm. at this point. Um, as you know, you, I mean, it's going to be that disparity if you go for the Hillers attacker or right. if you don't. You know, we haven't seen a kind of all-in in the middle. Uh, but I think it could even go tiebreak. I mean, I really wouldn't surprised, uh, be surprised if, if No Mercy now picks up a round uh, and Wusa picks up the other one and we have 4-4 four to four and we must go to a tiebreak, of course, which will be back mm -hmm. to Himmelsdorf. Um, but uh, it just depends. I mean, 5-3 to three t towards... Towards Wooster is what I would guess, but you know, it, it, it's wow. it's it's such it's such an even matchup. It's hard to say. Look at these lineups. What did you make of No Mercy's choice then? Um, I wonder if we can get it back on the stream. Well, the the Waffle Tiger, let's put it that way, is coming out to play. What's its purpose here? Well, it's got the big, um, the big gun there. So I think that's the 15-8. Um, as opposed to 12 and and that's just a huge huge gun that does a lot of damage a lot of penetration as well so i think no mercy are, are using a it's amazing camo valley in the bushes and as soon as wusa peaks anywhere they're just gonna be able to take them down very quickly and, and wusa's taking a lot of damage for for getting this hill but they have managed to get it and the quick amazing um positions that no mercy have down in the southern side of this map has also served them very well they've done some good damage onto those pushing tanks mm, this is gonna be interesting and we're already seeing rafiq starting off the cap here nothing too phenomenal about that but it's it's now how does no mercy weather the storm and it looks like we are starting to mobilize towards making a move what do you expect from them well um shock going up north he won't be spotted actually going there and i don't think uh, Moose is expecting it, and as long as he sits far enough behind a bush and gets uh, his team to spot them out, uh, spot Woos out, Jamato, he's going to be able to do some serious, serious work onto the side of them. And uh, I don't see how Wooster can actually recover from this one right now. You can see the hit points aren't going down drastically for them, but slowly but surely, it's it's going it's going from um, bad to worse, and they do have to make a decisive move. It looks like the Lion does want to just focus on towards Yamto, but he's taking a lot of damage for it, and Yamto's already kind of backed out of there. We're seeing the mobilization towards the north from Musa. They're going to try and peek around the corner, see what they can do, but now the crossfire needs to come into place for No Mercy. They cannot allow Musa back in this game. Here we go, Matt coming into place. Massive shot comes out. Matt is going to just down Durs, and you're seeing the damage starting to really work against Musa. They were all pretty damn low. Matt's being focused by Rufi and Siege. Lucky kind of come in towards Ved Lion. And now look at this tank. Fussy Eater needs to land a big shot, and he does. That's massive. Spoink goes down. And already a huge, huge bit of play coming out from No Mercy. The crossfires were crisp. And now the three remaining tanks for Wusa really don't have many options. They're trying to find cover. They're trying to find ways to get back in the game. But by now, they're down to one man. And No Mercy again, living up to their name, just punishing the Wusa boys. And this is the first time we're going to see a... A bit of a lead for No Mercy. Neve gonna just close it down. Rufi taking out of the picture. And a 4-3 to three score line in favor to No Mercy. Not what I expected out of that round. I thought we we're gonna see a far more steady play from Wusa. Yeah, Wusa went all in towards the Oof. top of the hill and, and I think they they made a gamble. They kind of saw the lineup from No Mercy with all the light tanks and they thought that the the Waffentrager, the Waffle Tiger would just sit back on that plateau. But it didn't. He went towards the side, and so <laughs> and did, worked. and so did the rest of No Mercy, and uh, they they did some great damage onto those T54s going up the hill, uh, and probably like two or two and a half, three k. And when you mm. take two and a half, three k, it, it's very hard to get back from that kind of uh, discrepancy. And look at it again. Look at this shot coming out from Farsi. Just brilliant stuff. Spoink had a decent amount of HP, but just gets melted. And even shock in the background there coming into play, and then just piece after piece falling into their hands. No Mercy really showing what they've got. But then again. They seem to do well on their first tries. They seem to always come up with quite ingenious plays. But then it's when Wusa responds, it becomes all even again. But do you mm. think they can close on this map? I don't know. It's, it's been back. It's, it's, been, <laughs> it's been back and forth. It's the whole been time. back and forth. So you know, one team's won around, the other team is 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 lost around. But that was a really decisive round for No Mercy, and I think it was a little bit too obvious of what Wusa was going to do. Yep. Both the times they're now lost on on mind, it's been when they've been seriously obvious. It's when they kind of innovated and, and, and been a little bit more cheeky that they've actually won it. So I want them to do that and then bring it 4-4. Four four. Melly, how are the people out there enjoying this? Because this has been pretty crazy. As soon as we got to Minds, I even saw Twitter blowing out in the corner of my eye. <laughs> Absolutely. People are loving this, aren't they? Uh, I mean, the team vote ended with 61% for Vuza, which is, uh, well, 
clear, if you ask me. It's uh, way over 50%. So the 39% uh, that actually voted for No Mercy have a pretty good run for the bonus code if No Mercy keeps showing the um, the performance they're already showing. Yeah. And if we look on Twitter, good job, No Mercy. It's all in the name. Keep it up, for example. <laughs> I love a tweet that. from the community. I love yes, that. absolutely. It's People. spot on as well. Like These guys, they, they don't care who they're up against. That play in the last round was just, you know, just zero care given. All right, we've got this game plan. We're going to just trash you. It doesn't matter if you're Wusa. Oh, yeah, that classic team has been pretty good since the dawn of time. Doesn't matter. We're no mercy. We're going to turn up and trash you. It's pretty cool to watch. World Cup winners, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect stuff. But we are just going to wait on what could be the final round. Yep. Could very well be. I mean, where's your money? Let's go. If I could get some bottle cup caps out or something, but. I, I can't Come put on. money on this kind of thing. I mean, <laughs> it's been back and forth. As I it said. has. But yeah, I think you have to keep this in mind overall. We saw, for instance, last season, Utopia coming to the season super strong. Don't be the dampener of my happy and spirits. Then, and then Look they, at you. And then they went downhill. But this is the thing. Oh. I mean... No. Oh. They got to they, they got to keep on uh, they got to keep going forwards because the yeah. reason for instance why you the, the reason I make this point is because Utopia this is honestly is it's it's like deja vu this is honestly kind of the thing I saw like Utopia being really uh, confident and then making great counter strats um, knowing exact true. great like foresight into what the other team is doing and then taking them down and that's really what I want to see from No Mercy as well. And it's, they're doing it, to be fair. They are, in this game. But as you said, Utopia came into the season last time around and was like, wow, these guys are pretty ingenious. They're showing some crazy stuff. Mm. And then it kind of petered off and, you know, roster change issues came in. Or, you know, not roster changes, but lineup issues and always having the same team. Lots of problems there. But these guys, let's see if they can close it out. They're sound match point. Four rounds. No mercy. It's all on you. Wusa, you were meant to turn up, but it looks like we're going to see a head-on-head -head clash here. This is crazy. Yeah, there's going to be the uh, oh. full T54 stack from both teams. I go. didn't see Wusa going cheeky here. Maybe this is where their experience comes in. And it looks like it is already. The crossfire set up from Wusa, even though they don't have the higher ground, did the initial damage. But Lucky Blast outstaying is welcome. Taken solo. Carvey's going to come into play. And Duo is necessary. But Spoink on the cross, trying to cross the hill, gets replied upon. This is going back and forwards. No mercy. He's going to try and hold the higher ground. Round, but Rufy gonna pile straight in. He's having none of it. Trying to stamp his authority. Take it to that final map. And it looks like they might be on the verge of doing it. But Matt says no again. These guys aren't giving up just yet. 3k HP. Make it 2.8 for No Mercy. Up against Wusa on a hell of a lot. And they're taking control of this hill. They're pushing themselves back in the game. Yamto is gonna have to dig deep here. And he just can't do it. But Lion comes in roaring back to this game. And now looking at this. Only two tanks remaining for No Mercy. The veterans stepping up when it matters. Shock, gonna try and find the shot. He's gonna take down one, but there's still four tanks in this. Theoretically, no it should have done better in that situation, but you could see Wusa just more confident. They finally got that match up with the T-54s that they were searching for, and it's worked out perfect, perfectly for them, and they do seem to have stolen this one back from the clutches of No Mercy. Rafik, the only one remaining in that 12T. And it's gonna be a short-lived bit of time for him. Stefan, he wants to, he wants to finish this one off, but I think it's Red Lion going to come round. Or Rufy, it will be Van Lion and Wusa are back in the game. This one is going neck to neck, head to head. This is not done just yet. We're going to go into the deciding map any second now, but let's go back to that game mm. because it, it was like classic minds again, that kind of head to head, just straight into each other, no messing around. And no mercy got the higher ground. Mm. Now, what went wrong for them off the back of that? They got the higher ground, but too slowly. I mean, right. they kind of stopped and started on going up that hill, and it cost them a lot of hit points. I mean, they should have just gone straight through. I mean, Nevi died very quickly, but if they gone straight through and they just got up the hill, you kind of got that curvature mm. where you can sit behind and you can shoot down on attacks. They would have won it if they did that, but they didn't. They lost that first tier eight tank very quickly. They reply replied finally onto Rufi, I believe, Ruffy. Um, but it just took too long, and um, No Mercy definitely got pounded down a little bit too much. Then uh, the hit point just slid in favor of um, Wusa very quickly. Um, but again, they just needed to push forward and, and not, never stop. You never stop on that hill, otherwise you're going to pretty much die very quickly. All right, just to refresh people's minds, and I guess more than anything, as it's now going to the tiebreaker map, how is this one played out? So whoever's um, won the fastest attacking round will be going over... Uh, will be able to decide which mm. side they want to play on Himmelsdorf, which I would guess would be attack um, in this current meta. Although it's been neck to neck so far, it's kind of insane, right? So where, where do you go with that? Um, 
Uh, still, I think it's going to. I think it's going to be. I mean, it's it's a lot more balanced than Muslim in general. So it, it could be either one. Whichever mm. side they feel more comfortable. Maybe they got a cheeky tactic to to bring out. Um, but it, you know, every every match counts. A lot of the teams kind of. You know, punish themselves at the end of the season for not winning the early season yeah. matches. And, you know, with only four teams now instead of six going to the offline finals, it's a little bit more cutthroat as well. It certainly is. Guys, I don't know what to say about this game. This is exactly how I wanted to start this season off. Melly, people must be going crazy right now. It's It's been insane. Back and forth the whole way, going back to Himmelsdorf now, where we started. And it's basically our brand new game again. Absolutely. I mean, we're five minutes ahead from the people at home, and so the Twitch just, get, just great get into the last <laughs> map, and, and they just witnessed the 4-3, and they're all like, what the hell is going on? I don't yeah. understand this game anymore. <laughs> and, well, people, tell us what's on your mind by using hashtag WGLEU, and also follow us on at WGLEU over on Twitter to get, uh, well, a live update well, live update during the matches, even if you have to leave your computer at one point during the night, if you can't follow all three matches in front of your computer, don't be sad. We will tweet you. We will tell you what's going on. We only have 140 characters for that. We'll make it possible, I, I promise you. And also, don't forget to get involved in our team vote. So next team vote for the upcoming match, which is Kasner Crew, uh, crew versus Virtus Pro. So <laughs> the two game. giants. Big game. Well, is about to go live. So head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU and get involved and maybe win one of three bonus codes which will give, be given, given away amongst the right entries and like the earliest. So if exactly. you enter first, the vote is up to, during the first map so you have enough time to participate. If you're not sure where to put your money on in the first round, don't worry, you have still four rounds to go. And as soon as we enter the second map, the team vote will close. But keep in mind, the earlier you get in your prediction, the higher your chances are of actually winning. And I think people out there now need to get involved because we're going to the tiebreaker map. This is the pinnacle of it, right? You've got these new guys come in, these guys who are, you know, clearly hungry for a victory here. Mm. But now they have to just turn up again. And it's going to be veteran players who are classics to this game having to go up against these kind of young guys wanting, you know, the, the, a little bit of a mark in it. Now, your final prediction, because it's going to be one round, basically. Well, well not, we, 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 we will find out in a second who's going to be on the attack or the defense. That's um, a big factor, You know, actually. it was back and forth, so mm. we can't even really put too much towards that in some respects. But oh. um, I, I, it, it, it's been back and forth. I mean, if it comes down to clever tactics, no mercy, you're going to win it. But I think we saw, think, I think we saw I the think last. I saw. <laughs> yeah, I think we saw Words the last round. They are. Um, <laughs> in the last round, that Wooster can still win those brawls quite well. So let's, let's obviously find that one out here. And it will be no mercy on the defense, Wooster on the attack. So we assume that Wooster made the faster time, if I'm not mistaken, in this. We'll make that assumption for now. But it's 4 4. One round to decide it all. What do we make of these tank lineups? Anything standing out? All pretty normal? No, I mean, Triple IS 3 is, is definitely going to be a lot more common than uh, the, the Triple 5100 we saw last season. Uh, just because you need a little bit more brawl, they have a lot more close engagements. And, you know, if you, get, if you go like. <laughs> one versus one of the 5100 you, you can be in very bad situations it's only really good when it's got when it's got backup so uh, it's the same tactic we saw from no mercy when they were on the defense first um or from Wooster actually when they were on the defense they put in the 12 t there getting the eight line spot and uh, it predicts him to go across but again Wooster, they're not willing to go up the eight line straight away they know that no mercy like to put tanks up there they know that they as long as they have that middle area they can they can do some initial damage but Matt Piel this time not making that mistake of going to G3 where he was hull down in the IS3 and got destroyed by Vit Line. So uh, a better start for them at least. A little bit of fire coming in from that hill as mentioned. Lucky Blast's going to take a touch of damage but he's going to back out of there and live to fight another day. He's got the IS3 behind him. There's a, there's a hell of a lot of HP to go through. No schwank in that one. But five minutes and 34 seconds. It's going to have to be a smart play from Wusa to break this one. And it's Rafik. Just keeping eyes on them. You can see he's been doing well there, kind of keeping the IS3s in check, making sure they can't push that A-line, and if they do try and commit for killing him, like Rufy is, he might be able to get some damage towards him. Now, Rufy will pick that up for free almost and just gets away scot-free, but what do we make of the move now coming out from No Mercy? They're kind of readjusting here. Well, um, they saw that, you know, perhaps that 12T was spotted, and they're going to try and go for the hill a little bit. Um, they know Wusa aren't there, so maybe they can get the overmatch. But the problem is, you know, that's uh, 
that uh, T37 of Siege is just going to constantly peek over and keep an eye on them. And maybe when they see those 250-100s, you know, Wusa will just be able to push straight up the three line or the eight line. So it's going to be big plays. I think No Mercy are definitely struggling at this point. They're not exactly sure what's going to happen. Um, they haven't got any spots up that eight line at all. And they've also put the 5100s into an awkward situation where they can basically be cut wow, in half. this is a great crossfire well, about it, to come. It depends. It, it, it depends. I mean, oh, I'm, they push up the hill, right? I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, the T37 of Siege didn't just stay on the hill because he could have got some great damage from the back of those 5100s. But now the 5100s just about got the hill. This actually might be slanting to no mercy's favor. If they capitalize on that and if they realize fast enough, they have actually a really good position between Fussy Eater. I'm not sure who the other uh, 5100 is. I can imagine it's Yamto up on that hill. Yeah, they could have a really good spot here, but already Woos are going to try and just kind of cluster up across the D-line. Seems to move in. Rufy's in a good spot, but Lion, Carvey, Stefan, Spoink moving through. Now, they're on the five line. They could make a bit of a play towards the cap, but it looks like they have something else in mind here. Yeah, they definitely don't want to go for that cap straight away. Um, you still got the T37 towards the left side. Maybe they are predicting that the 5100 is going to be over there and they just want to get the overmatch. I mean, the obvious thing is always that cap. We saw in the previous season, uh, as an attacker, you had a, quite a good success rate of just pushing around the one to three line. It was definitely one of the better attacking moves. And, you know, if you get the overmatch, it might work out very well for them. You got uh, Matt PL spotted in the IS3, so that you know at least one of them's out of the equation and, and they're just going to push forwards. It's a 3v4. The overmatch is definitely against No Mercy, but can they withstand the forces about to pile into them? Rufy takes a little, but now here comes a return fire. Nothing con connecting from the northwest side as Vitlion already finds shock. It's not looking good for No Mercy just at this moment, but now here comes Fussy to round the back, but Rufy again finds Nevi. This is not going No Mercy's way. One by one, they are falling, and Wusa have just walked into the right place at the right time, and Lucky Blast, there's nothing lucky about what he's doing here. He's trying to kite these guys around by a little bit of time but time is not with them and he's going to be caught pretty damn soon. A good uh, start there for Wu so they have to continue the momentum going forwards. No Mercy have got one thing going for them quite a lot of the tanks are Wu's, Wu's are tanks are quite low they might just want to try and finish them off now. So Rufy's potentially you know, quite easy to go down. Durs as well now. Siege. Let's see if they can do anything with it. Yamto, Fasi Eater, still up by the northeast. We still have the IS-3 as well, Matt. But Matt is about to be overwhelmed as well. He got spotted earlier on, and he's being melted down by Wusa. The team just continues to roll out together, and he will be a one-shot for Stefan, and it is. Now, the two remaining tanks have to play this so damn smartly. They're down to, what, 1.6k health. They're up against 4.7. And the cap is already started over towards the west. I don't know if they can get back into this. No, I don't think so. I think this is game over. I think Woos have just about done enough to uh, win this attacking round. I mean, that's the advantage of being quicker. Um, you can decide the side. Uh, Going to go for the cap as well. So he's just, you know, providing that backup plan. But, uh, you know, No Mercy really have to pull something incredible out of the bag to be able to win this round now. Two versus seven, not a single tank going down for the German side. Um, but they might just want to change that as a Zenikta could put himself into a little bit of an awkward position, but that guy's very, very good. I don't think he's going to, you know, be the only one to basically fall in this round. But there's only 12 seconds left. It's going to be down to the wire. I don't know if Yamto has the time. He's going to be caught. He's going to be spotted out on the side here, and the crossfire coming in is pretty damn potent with four seconds remaining. Fussy Eater is nowhere near this. Spoin can slow him down, and it's going to be Wusa just securing this one in time. Nicely done, boys. Finally showing that they are the more experienced side. And sadly for No Mercy, it just seemed that really the way Wusa played was just completely against what they had in mind. Yeah, I think that push was a little bit unobvious. I think when you're playing as the attacker, mm. when you're playing as the defender, you expect the attacker to actually go for one of the two caps. Yeah. But didn't, uh, but they didn't. But it again highlights that whole defending dilemma. You know, they had a great position of the eight line, but Wusa didn't touch the eight line in the three times they, the three times they attacked on Himmelsdorf. So, mm. you know, there is a bluff thing as well, but I think No Mercy can be pretty happy that they at least took a point away from Wusa. I mean, Wusa just got two points out of that. Yeah. No Mercy got the one, so as a new team with quite a few new faces, it, it's not a bad to the season at all. Not they're bad in, start to the season. They're in second place if you want to look at it that way <laughs> until the second game starts. But yeah, I think a really good showing all in all coming out from No Mercy. You guys out there started to believe you had faith and Wusa just breaking your hearts. But, you know, nicely done by Wusa in the end, showing that they do have that class, they do have that well-rounded play to just close it out when required. 
But later down the line, there's going to be more hungry teams coming in, and Wusa are going to have to be ready. But then again, No Mercy needs to turn up a little bit more on those final deciding maps, I think. Just, just that little bit of pressure maybe adding up, just reading it a little wrong. Just a touch of inexperience showing through. But I mean a touch for a brand new team to this. Anyway, that aside, you guys at home got your votes in. You guys are predicting it. And you kind of were right. You know, how did I doubt you ever? I shouldn't. Melly, they did seem to get this one correct. Absolutely. 61% still as sad uh, for Team Vuza. And I'm going to look into the scores a bit later on to see who actually won if we had right predictions. Well, I think so. But um, No Mercy nevertheless showed an awesome uh, performance during this game with a very strong, well, entrance into the season against one of the veteran teams. And this is really promises, uh, promising for, for the further season, if you ask me. And I can't wait to see one of the other five teams that we haven't seen during the past season. Exactly. Seasons. This is just the first team who's kind of come in and been like, well, actually, yeah, we can compete. So God only knows what else we have coming up this season. <laughs> Absolutely. And but we have a tweet from the community. People, if you want to get involved, use the hashtag WGLEU just as RT skeptic an RTS captain maybe uh, did and he asked do you think we will see anything unique as far as tank lineups go in the, in the coming matches well there's been a season already um, I don't know there haven't been any significant change that kind of tanks have been added to the mm. game uh, in the last couple of patches um, of course we're into 9.8.1 right now so you know, we got to wait a little bit. I mean, 9.9 .9 is rumored to be a really big patch. It's, of course, the one that's coming up next, the next iteration. And I think we'll, we'll potentially see some some big changes then. But, you know, they've still got a little bit of time uh, before the test server comes up on that one. So, you know, we'll be able to answer that question answer that question a little bit better in, in a few weeks time and i mean in the regard of of the new maps we have in the new map pool mm. for this season do you think that we can see maybe something exotic tanks that haven't been used that are there but haven't been used much during the past seasons can get to use maybe yeah maybe um it's it's hard to say i mean we use quite a lot of tanks already i mean it's good to see that the new maps aren't you know, so T54 lightweight uh, heavy in the in the grand finals and maybe in season five we saw a little bit too much T54 lightweight. So it's good to see that, for instance, on mines. You know, we got a little bit of a combination of tanks, for instance, uh, from the defending side. So I think we'll see some changes. Um, I, I, I'm really looking forward towards, for instance, you know, Lakeville if, if artillery is going to be picked. Um, Could the Ice Three be uh, be the new T51 lightweight? T yeah, I think it will be. I, I mean, the i3 is always a beast, and, and with the changes, even, it's even better. Okay, thank you. So, people, if you have any questions left, head over to Twitter, tweet us using the hashtag WGLEU, and maybe Ollie will answer, will be able to answer your question. I think he pretty much is, because he's our expert, he's our walking dictionary, and there is, well, very few uh, questions he can't answer. What's, uh, what's the answer of life? Uh, 42. Look Nailed at him. It. So people head over to Twitter, use the hashtag WGLEU. We will be back after a short break. And um, don't forget the team vote is up for the next match, which will be Kastner Crew versus Virtus Pro. See you in a bit.